One of the reasons why carbohydrates can make us fat is because of the Randall cycle, which is a metabolic process that involves the competition of glucose and fatty acids for their oxidation and uptake in muscle and adipose tissue. The Randall cycle explains how eating too many carbohydrates can impair the metabolism of fat and vice versa. It's what we call a cross inhibition mechanism. When we eat carbohydrates, they are broken down to glucose. Our body produces a hormone called insulin. Insulin, which helps our cells take up glucose and store it as glycogen or fat. It also prevents our body from using fat and as an alternative fuel source, which is much cleaner because it actually signals that there is enough glucose available. Now we can produce glucose from protein through the breakdown of amino acids and also through, believe it or not, fatty acids. It is possible. Now, when we eat carbohydrates, we inhibit the oxidation of fat. Remember what I said earlier about the cross inhibition mechanism. We promote the storage of fat. Now, this can lead to weight gain, obesity, and insulin resistance, which is a condition where our cells become less responsive to insulin and our blood sugar levels remain high. Insulin resistance can increase the risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. But we cannot measure insulin resistance. There is no possible test we can use for it. Therefore, our best bet is just to stop eating carbohydrates, believe it or not. Now, on the other hand, when we eat fat, we stimulate the oxidation of fat. We inhibit the oxidation of glucose because of that same reason. This because the products of fat oxidation, such as acetyl coenzyme A and NADH, which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. That's a mouthful. These can interfere with the enzymes that are involved in glucose oxidation, such as pyruvate, dehydrogenase, and phosphofructokinase. This means when we eat fat, we spare glucose, we reroute it to glycogen or lactate, which can be used for gluconeogenesis, which I mentioned earlier, the process of making new glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. The useful implementation of gluconeogenesis to the human body is that it works on a as per needed basis. You can't produce too much gluconeogenesis. You can, but it's unlikely. You just have to eat a ton of protein to be able to do it. The likelihood is that you're probably not eating five or 600 grams of protein per day. So it's nothing really to worry about. When we eat a predominantly fat-based diet in con consideration of the substrate that we're actually taking in, we enhance the metabolism of glucose and we prevent the accumulation of glucose in our blood. This can lead to weight loss, improved blood sugar and insulin levels and reduced inflammation and oxidative stress. Now the Randall cycle shows that carbohydrates and fat have opposite opposing effects on our metabolism and they can interfere with each other when they are consumed together. This is why I say to people, if you're going to add in carbohydrates to your diet, you have them separate to fats. You do not add them to fats. If you're trying to gain weight for weight's sake, yes, eat a chocolate bar with a load of popcorn and a load of Haribo, that will do it. That will make you gain weight, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's good weight. With this in mind, it's actually beneficial to limit the carbohydrate intake that you have, especially the refined and processed ones that have lots of toxic crap in them that your body does not need. I actually recommend increasing healthy fats, so that's any animal fat pretty much that's found in meat, fish, eggs, and dairy if you tolerate it. This can help optimize our fuel selection and adapt our substrate supply and demand according to our needs. Remember what I said earlier about giving your body protein to create glucose through gluconeogenesis? Well, that's just what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about eating so much of this or so much of that just so you can still perform the gym. No, you just need the right amount of each. Your body will adapt, your hunger signals will change. So that's exactly how it works when it, when it comes to talking about building muscle. Your appetite will go up if you give it the reason to. So that means stimulate your muscles in the gym, so on, so forth. If you like this short video, please leave a like, comment if you have not yet already, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet.